Good morning, my friends. It's Sunday, August 15th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. I have a very happy cat who has eaten and is purring. Hello. Very happy to be here with me today. Happy to be outside. Oh, one more cat. Okay. And then I have with me this beautiful cross helping me pray in the summer months. Hermione is such a loud eater. She purrs and eats at the same time. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction. So today is our day of worship. And Jesus has been talking now for three Sundays about being um, bread. He says today, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. He's trying to explain something fundamental to us about who he is. You know, it was 5,000 years ago, scholars think that we discovered this thing, this thing called yeast that we could, uh, that had a life of its own, really. I mean, you add flour and water and it grows, it lives. People keep uh, yeasts and concoctions on their counters and um, it continues as long as you feed it. The difficulty with these passages today, understanding them, is that as Americans, we don't, we no longer equate food with life. We equate food with all kinds of strange eating disorders, maybe a little bit with hunger, with pleasure, with having fun with our friends, but none of us in this country, not even the poorest, not even the homeless that I work with at times, are really starving. No one starves in this country. So we do not know the feeling of being increasingly and frighteningly hungry and the feeling of being given bread. A substance that we can make beautiful and delicious that lives on in a sense, we contribute to it, but it lives on. What a miraculous substance for people who are starving. Remember that in the Lord's Prayer, the one prayer that Jesus taught us, he said, give us the, our, this day our daily bread. Help us to live. When Jesus says, I am the living bread, like yeast is living, that came down from heaven, heaven and whoever eats this bread will live forever. He's trying to tell us that we cannot survive eternally without him. That there is no life without Christ. The logos, the wisdom of God, the communication of God, the seeking of God. We cannot only address our physical and emotional needs in this life. We have to build a bridge to the maker of all things. That is our purpose in this life. We have to begin to rely on that living bread while we are here so that when it is time, we can cross over to there. We have to practice disciplines. Prayer, you're here with me. Thanksgiving, giving, serving, growing, meeting with groups and discerning God's will. That is the purpose of our lives. To eat this bread is to be sustained. It is to be eternal. It's not a joke. It's not a, well, if I have time, I might show up to church. This is the one most important thing in our lives, to come to know God and to understand who God is and why we were made and to give thanks, to praise and have a sense of awe to know where our life comes from. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever that eats of this bread will live forever. My friends, there's nothing more important than going to church today. And I know that the distraction and the darkness fights us mightily on Sundays and tells us all the reasons why we can't quite make it today. It is a spiritual battlefield find a way, watch a church online, go in person, 
Be present with the most important living bread of eternity. Nothing else is nearly as essential. To go to worship today, my friends, never forget the first thing on the first day of the week, the living bread. Let us pray. Almighty God, in this busy world, even with COVID, it is so easy for us to get our priorities confused, to think that it's more important to read a newspaper or write an article than it is to go to church, to think that it's more important to do sports or, or even to rest. For we know, Lord, that there is nothing more important than practicing the disciplines of the spiritual life that our purpose here is to come to know you and to love you, and nothing else is nearly so important. Help us to have the courage and strength to practice our faith, even in the midst of all the temptations that come upon us and pull us away from you with violence and repetition, incessantly urging us not to come to you. Give us courage to face those demons those temptations, and to continue on in strength, our practice of faith. We ask you to bless those who are ill today, Lord, those who are dying, the hungry, the sick, the lonely, and the grieving, particularly Mark. Blanket this world with your loving grace, Lord. Save us from the time of trial. Give us our daily bread and guide us today in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you and have a great day.